Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm finally trying Clinique makeup. Okay, listen, it's kind of crazy because Clinique has been in my family as far as what my mom used to use. My aunt worked at the Clinique counter for so many years. That's such a vivid memory for me growing up. She would always bring back like little samples of Clinique and I remember how their perfume smelled, but it's kind of crazy because through all of my years of life and through knowing about Clinique and seeing like everyone use it around me, I never personally tried it. Like I might have tried the perfume and maybe a lipstick here and there and maybe a moisturizer that I would steal from my mom's bathroom. But other than that, I've never tried the brand. So I thought it'd be really fun to sit down and film a full face using Clinique. I asked you guys on Instagram to kind of suggest products to me because this is something that I'm not very familiar with as far as what's available from the brand. So I'm really excited. I went to Ulta yesterday and I bought a full face of Clinique stuff and we're gonna be putting it all on and doing a wear test today. So I'm really excited. Let's get right into it. I'm I'm gonna be prepping the skin with this right here. This is probably one of the products that I'm most familiar with, not as far as like trying it goes. I don't really have an opinion as far as the formula, but I've seen this everywhere. It's always been like something that my mom keeps in her makeup bag. This is the Dramatically Different Moisturizer. So I grabbed this much, that might've been too much, who knows. And I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this all over the skin. Yeah, I definitely got too much, so I'm gonna take the rest down the neck. A lot of you guys on Instagram said this is like your favorite thing from Clinique, so I am actually really excited to try this. Okay, as it dries down, it almost has a little bit of a tacky finish, which is gonna be great because I'm just gonna use this as primer. So Clinique has a lot of different foundation ranges and there were a couple specifically that a lot of people said I should try out. One of them was the Even Better Foundation, which I still wanna try. If you guys have tried that and if it's good, let me know in the comments, but I ended up picking up this one right here. This is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. I've heard good things about this and I thought it was kind of fun that it's a two-in-one, so. We're gonna be using this as our foundation and our concealer. I have no idea how much to use. Maybe I'll just start with one side of the face. Um, I picked up the shade Flax. Their shades ran very pink in a lot of the ranges and I felt like this was probably the best match for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my Real Techniques foundation brush and I'm just gonna start to blend that out first with a brush. Oh wow, okay, that has a lot of coverage, which is good. That's what I love in a foundation. Okay, once it's distributed evenly, I'm gonna go ahead and take my sponge and I'm gonna go ahead and press that into the skin just to make sure I don't have any brush lines or anything like that. I feel like the shade is great for me. I think it matches perfectly actually. Okay, wow, so this side obviously has foundation. This side does not. I really do like the finish of this so far. I like the coverage. You can still see my skin through it, um, but it looks really natural. It just kind of looks like my skin, but a little more even toned. It doesn't feel or look heavy on the skin either. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side of the face. This blemish here is killing me. It is just the worst. It actually looks worse than it feels. It just does not want to go away. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side using a brush first, making sure to bring it down the jawline a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing and just press everything into the skin with my sponge. Guys, I actually really like this upon application so far. Obviously, we're gonna be doing a wear test. That's where my real opinion will form. I'm gonna take what's left on my sponge and go over the eyelid to cancel anything out. I'm not really sure how to use this as concealer. I'm just gonna maybe build it up a little bit under the eyes and over blemishes. I do feel like I want a little more coverage on the cheeks here, a little bit on the chin maybe. And this time I'm just gonna blend that out with just the sponge. I'm not gonna use a brush. Okay, that actually works really well as a concealer. Look how well it concealed that beast of a blemish. So it is really layering up on top of itself nicely. Well, so far so good. I really do love how that looks on the skin. So let's move on. We're gonna go into some powder. Um, this is the Clinique blended face powder and it comes with a brush. I got mine in the shade 20 Invisible Blend, which I'm hoping is the translucent shade. They had a few shades and I'm pretty sure that this one is the translucent shade. Somebody actually did say that this was something that they wanted me to try from the brand. So I am excited to try this translucent powder. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It kind of has a little bit more of a beigey undertone. We'll see how it applies and we'll see if it looks translucent or not. I'm just gonna take that on a small brush first and I'm gonna make sure that there's no creases under the eye. Oh no. Oh, you guys, I don't know if that's translucent. Do you see what's happening? Oh, I hate when that happens. I have such fair skin that it's freaking tinting me like yellow. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna look this up and see if I even bought the translucent color. Okay. Yeah, this is the lightest shade. This says that it's the invisible one. This is not invisible on me. 
I'm just going to um, continue on and <laughs> hope for the best. <laughs> oh man. I'm just patting out the creases of the foundation on the eyelid and I'm just using that same powder to set. Okay, I'm not loving this and I can't believe that this is the lightest shade. It's not very transparent. This would definitely work on anybody with a darker skin tone than me, but if you are around my skin tone, this definitely is going to be too dark. So uh, we'll just keep going. We will um, just cross our fingers and hope that everything looks decent in the end. Who knows, maybe it could all come together. <laughs> Oh, I'm just taking a larger brush and pressing this into the skin to lock in the foundation. I'm just lightly going over everything with my sponge, just trying to see if that would help at all. I don't know if it is going to help, but... Okay, so I guess when I like step back, it's not the worst coloring ever, but it's definitely not as good as it looked a minute ago with that foundation color. It's just personally one of my pet peeves when a powder darkens the color of your concealer or foundation because I spent all that time trying to color match, you know, and now it's like a different color altogether. Okay, all right, we are just going to continue on. Okay, this is a really interesting product. This is the Clinique Uplighting Illuminating Powder. I got mine in the shade 01 Nude, which again was the lightest shade, and I'm hoping that it will work for me. It has a little bit of a peachy tint to it. The thing that's interesting about this, let me grab the box. It says it's a sheer illuminating powder with soft focus pigments that flatters skin tone with a candlelit glow of radiance, and apparently you can wear it alone as a finishing powder or after foundation to highlight. I thought maybe I would try it as a finishing powder, and then we can maybe use it as a highlighter later. So I'm just taking that same powder brush. Oh man, pray for me. <laughs> and I'm just going to apply this on top of the skin, just kind of using pressing motions. Oh, you can see that. And it seems like it might have a little bit of coverage to it. I don't know. Ooh, actually, that looks kind of nice. Do you see that? Do you see the glow that it's giving? I'm all about a good finishing powder. So I'm actually pretty intrigued by this right now. We might have to do something more with that blemish right there in a second. But for now, we're just gonna leave this as is. Okay, I feel like that kind of helped. And I really do like the finish that that gave. Hmm, really nice. Okay, let's bronze up the skin. This was like the only bronzer that I could find. This is the Clinique True Bronzer, and this is the shade 02 Sunkissed, which again was the only shade. I don't know why they would say like 02 if there's no 01. You know what I mean? All right, we're going to try to bronze up the complexion really quickly with this. So I'm just gonna take a big fluffy brush. This one's from Real Techniques. I'm gonna tap off the extra. Oh. Maybe I don't wanna use this brush. Oh, today is a weird makeup day, you guys. I don't know why it got all streaky right here. Maybe I didn't powder enough? Okay, interesting. I'm just gonna take my powder brush and try to blend that out. I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna take an angled brush from Sigma and I'm gonna try to blend this out a little bit more along the forehead, along the cheeks, of course. I'm gonna take a little bit on the cheeks and a little across the nose. And of course, I'm going to dust some down the neck and a little on my chest since things are looking a little bit, you know, more sun-kissed than what I was initially anticipating. I want my face to match my neck. Wow, it looks like summertime and it's the middle of winter, you know? All right, let's take a look at this. I don't mind it. I feel like it blended out pretty well, except for under the cheek, but that might have been my fault, not setting that well enough. Um, but this definitely looks like I was out in the sun. It kind of has a little bit of a terracotta undertone, so it gives you that sun-kissed kind of a vibe. All right, before I go crazy, let's go ahead and do the brows. I actually picked up a brow pencil from Clinique. This is the Super Fine Liner for brows, and I got the shade 02 Soft Brown. One thing that I'm already noticing that I don't love about it is there's no spoolie on it. I personally need a spoolie when I'm using a brow pencil. So I'm using another spoolie from another pencil to brush up my brows. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the brows with this pencil. Okay, I'm actually really liking the way I'm able to create these fine lines right here because it makes it look like real brow hair. So far so good on this pencil, besides the fact that there's no spoolie on the other end. Okay, after I filled it in, I'm just gonna go ahead and brush up the brows with a spoolie from another pencil again. Okay, so I actually do really like the color of that. I like the application of the brow pencil itself. So we'll see how it wears, but this is pretty good. I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I would, but I just don't think I would like travel with it or reach for it over some other ones just because there's not a spoolie on it. That's just me personally. All right, let's go ahead into the eyes, then we'll do blush and lips. So I actually picked up one of their Chubby Stick Shadow Tint for Eyes. Um, they actually didn't have too many different colors in stock, so I decided to kind of wing it and go with a lilac shade, which is not what I would normally 
chosen, but you know, here we are trying new things. I think it could look pretty. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this. I've never used one of these, but it seems like it could be fun. And I'm just gonna color my eyelid with this lilac chubby stick. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of that on and then with a clean brush, I'm gonna try to buff it upward a little bit. Hmm, that's kind of a fun color. I don't know, this could be really pretty. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that on the lower lash line as well. And I'm gonna take the same brush and I'm gonna attempt to buff that out a little bit. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on this eye. I actually do like the feel of this so far. It seems really easy to work with and they had tons of other colors, but again, they just weren't in stock at the Ulta I was at. So they had like a really pretty gold, a really pretty bronze, which I feel like would be colors that most people would wear. Maybe that's why they were out of stock. But this lilac is fun. And it's really easy to just kind of scribble the color all over the lid and then just blend it out. I'm actually really enjoying this. I think it looks nice. I'm interested to see if it creases throughout the day because that's one of my um, issues a lot of the times with cream shadows like this. So we'll have to see how it wears. So then I was looking at like their eyeshadow palettes and their single eyeshadows and I saw this and I thought it'd be beautiful to try to do like a halo eye using this. Look at the shade of this eyeshadow. This is the Lid Pop in the shade Petal Pop. And I just loved the iridescent duochrome pink gold kind of a situation. So, and I also love the flower in there. I think it's so pretty. So I'm just gonna take this on my finger and I'm just gonna press this in the center of the eyelid. Hopefully this looks good together. Look how pretty it is. It almost has a bit of lilac in it as well, which is why I felt like it'd be pretty layered on top. And again, I'm wanting to do more of a halo eye. So I'm just keeping this in the center of the eyelid because I do wanna see how the cream shadow performs on the outer corners without setting it with anything. So I'm just gonna pop that in the center of the lid. That's kind of fun. It's a very like springtime kind of look. Well, actually it could work for winter, why not? So I'm actually taking a small brush and I'm dipping into that eyeshadow. The thing is with this eyeshadow is it's like almost a baked formula. It's not very buttery, which isn't really a deal breaker or anything. It's just something I'm noticing. Uh, but anyways, I'm just gonna apply that right underneath the lower lashes in the center of the lid, creating that halo effect on the lower lash line as well. I will say one thing that I noticed when I was just looking at all the products was it seems like everything is pretty user-friendly when it comes to Clinique and their makeup and everything like that. Everything seems pretty streamlined, pretty simple, easy to understand, and I really did like that about the brand. All right, I'm just gonna take that brush we were using to blend out the lilac color, and I'm gonna make sure all the edges are nice and blended. It's a very soft eye look, but I'm actually really into it. All right, let's apply mascara. This is the Clinique High Impact Mascara. I got a lot of people saying that I should try this out. They actually had an entire like range of high impact mascaras. I picked up the original one. I was assuming that that's what most people were talking about. Hopefully I assumed right. We're gonna go ahead and apply this on the top and bottom lashes. Okay, that's about one coat on the top lashes. I'm gonna try to build it up a little bit more than this. But I like how soft the formula feels. And so far it feels like a very good mascara for every day in my opinion. I'm really liking how this isn't clumping together at all. Okay, even after building it up to a second coat on the top lashes, it still looks really natural and it literally just defines and emphasizes the lashes you have in their natural state, it seems like. It adds that length and it adds that definition, but it's not gonna look like overdone or like you've got clumpy volume going on, which is a look that I personally enjoy for certain occasions, but for more of an everyday kind of lash look, I feel like this works and I really do like it. I'm just gonna take my brush and dust away any mascara marks that might've dried on the lid and on the lower lash line. Okay, cool. That's kind of a pretty soft lilac-y kind of makeup look. I'm actually into it. So let's go ahead and do highlighter, which I'm gonna try this as the highlighter, which this is the Uplighting Illuminating Powder. I'm gonna try to build it up on the cheeks and we will see what happens here. So I'm just gonna take a bit of this on a highlighting brush and I'm just going to start to build this up on the high points. Wow, oh my, that's actually like so nice. What, are you kidding? I'm going to apply this down the center of the nose as well and a bit on the cupid's bow. Do you see the glow that it gives? But it literally feels so buttery on the skin. Wait, this is one of the products that I'm actually really shocked by. Oh, because I love highlighters like this. I was just really concerned because it did look so dark in the pan and facing forward, I don't think you can really tell that there's a bit of a tint to it. Maybe a tiny bit? I don't know, I'll have to look in natural light, but I'm in love with that. I'm in love with how that looks. I'm gonna try to take that powder on a smaller brush and I'm gonna use this to highlight the inner corner of the eye. 
Okay, that looks nice if you build it up. So I'm having to layer it a couple times, but you can definitely get it to show up in the inner corner as well. And then I'm gonna take what's left, and then I'm gonna take that same powder and apply it right under the brow to highlight that. Okay, I just feel like my skin looks so nice and dewy. I'm gonna take my sponge again and just press things into the skin because we used a lot of powders and I'm actually not going to use a setting spray. I didn't see a setting spray from Clinique. Maybe they had one, but maybe I missed it. Um, wow, okay, I really love that powder. Okay, for blush, I wanted to try this out right here. This is so pretty. They had a lot of different colors. I chose the shade Nude Pop. This is the Clinique Cheek Pop Blush, and we're gonna apply this on the cheeks. I just love the flower in here. I think it's so pretty. So I'm gonna take this on a brush, and I'm gonna smile and just kind of press that onto the apples of the cheeks. This is such a pretty blush color. I'm really loving it. I'm bringing it up a little higher on the cheeks just to kind of stick to that fresh effect look that we're going for. And I'm actually gonna take a little bit of the blush on an eyeshadow brush, and I'm just gonna pop it right here, a little bit above the crease as a transition shade almost, just to kind of help tie the blush color into the eye look. I actually think this looks really nice with that lilac color. Nice, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off any foundation that's on the lips. Well, I should have picked up a lip liner, but I didn't. I have a lipstick and then a gloss. So I picked up this lipstick right here. This is from the Even Better Pop Lip Color Foundation. What? I think it's just a lipstick, I think. <laughs> a lip color foundation, that's interesting. Okay, um, this is in the shade Subtle, which is like a really pretty nude. And I'm just going to apply that to the lips. Okay, that's really pretty. I think the name Subtle is very suiting for this because it is more of a kind of subtle nude. I like that though. Okay, I actually did try this. I bought this because it won an Alert Best of Beauty Award and I tried it in that video that I did a couple months back. And this is the Clinique Pop Splash Lip Gloss and I have the shade 02, oh no, the name is covered up. Okay, well I will have the shade listed down below. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this to the center of the lips. I'm gonna use my finger to press that into the lipstick. All right, we're going to step back and assess the situation. I'm taking what's left on the bronzer brush and just kind of adding a bit more to the forehead. My skin is like glowing. I really do like it. I'm gonna go back in with my sponge and just press everything down into the skin. <clears throat> okay, I need to um, further conceal that blemish. I'm gonna take my Makeup Forever Pressed Powder Foundation. This is amazing for so many things, but especially when I have stubborn blemishes like this. Did you see how that just disappeared? It's amazing for just like pressing on top of blemishes that you need to just disappear. Voila, I love it. Okay, I'm also going to set the brows. I'm just gonna use a clear brow gel. I didn't see a clear brow gel. I saw some tinted ones from Clinique, but I didn't pick it up because I just thought I could use my own from home with the brow pencil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and brush this clear gel through the brows. Okay, so that's everything on the face. I actually have to say, I have to admit, this looks way better than I had anticipated, especially after applying the translucent powder that wasn't so translucent on me. I feel like it did all end up coming together in the end and it looks better than I thought it would. I love this fresh look that I created and I feel like it was really easy to achieve and so far everything looks really nice. I think the thing I'm like most shocked by and excited by is this up lighting illuminating powder. I was this close to not even picking this up, but I think it makes the skin look so beautiful all over if you want to. And I love how you can pinpoint certain areas of the face and just build it up and it will create more of a highlighter look. I really did enjoy that. So now we're just gonna do a wear test. It is currently 12.43, so I'll just say 12.45 p.m. I'm gonna be wearing this for the rest of the day and we'll see how everything holds up. But honestly, I really do like how it looks. I'm actually into this soft lilac situation on the eyes. It's not something that I normally do, but I'm really, really enjoying it. So let's do our wear test now. I will see you guys in my first check-in. Okay, so here I am, my first check-in in front of natural light. I just finished filming and I wanted to show you guys what it looks like in front of the window. Um, it's pretty bright today. It's actually snowing outside. So the sun, well, it snowed and the sun is reflecting off of the snow, which is why it's so bright in here. But I really do like how everything looks. I love the glow that that powder gave. And I actually really love this lip combo. And I think the eye look is really nice as well. So I like my makeup right now. Obviously a wear test will determine my real thoughts about each thing, but so far so good, you guys. I'm really excited about this makeup actually. And I'm super in love with a couple of the products already. So I'll see you guys in my next check-in and we'll see how everything is holding up. Okay, I don't know if this is the best light ever, but it's currently 8 p.m., which means I've been wearing this makeup for about seven hours now. 
I really actually do enjoy how everything is looking. I feel like my complexion looks nice and fresh. Um, nothing's looking overly oily. It's starting to look kind of more dewy in the T-zone, but that's very common with my skin type. I get pretty oily in the T-zone. So considering that, it's actually pretty balanced still. And everything seems to still be on the face. The eyeshadow isn't really creasing. Maybe a tiny bit, but that's typical as well. So I'm interested to see how it keeps wearing. I'm going to go out to dinner, and then I will come back and do my last check-in. And we will see where everything is and what my final thoughts are on all the products I tried today. So I will see you in a minute. All right, you guys, I am back. It is currently 10, 11 p.m., which means I've been wearing this for over nine hours, right? Am I doing the math right? Hopefully. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at everything. I must say throughout the day, I really did enjoy how everything on the complexion looked. The eye look is great as well. It's not really creasing considering it was a cream shadow. I mean, you'll see a little bit there, but it's not as bad as it typically is with cream shadows on me. So let's just move through everything. Okay, the dramatically different moisturizing lotion. I feel like this contributed somewhat to like a really healthy complexion today. So I do feel like I'll continue to use it. I'll have to keep you posted because it is more of a skincare item, but I feel like it prepped my face well for makeup and I really liked how my skin looked today. So I am going to continue to use this. I'm actually very, very shocked by this foundation here. The only thing that I would do differently next time is I would not use it as under eye concealer. I just felt like it was a little bit too heavy for that. But as far as a foundation goes, this was beautiful. It wore very well and it hardly settled into my smile lines. And also around my nose, it hardly broke up. It usually looks way worse around the nose after about this many hours of wear. I also really enjoyed it as a spot concealer, but again, I did feel like it was a little heavy under the eyes, but I'm actually really excited about this foundation and it makes me wanna try more complexion products from Clinique. So I will definitely be using that. The powder, again, okay, I really liked how my face looked today. So I'm assuming that this contributed, but what I did not like is how it tinted my face. So I might try this like one more time. I don't feel like I'm gonna reach for it again though, just because of that issue. Issue, but I'm kind of conflicted because again, I really liked how my skin looked today So based off my first impressions I don't know if I'm obsessed over this just because of the color of it not necessarily the formula So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Okay, the Clinique bronzer I felt like it lasted really nicely on the skin. I have so many bronzers and I'm a fan of so many bronzers I usually don't go for something that's this warm toned with that being said I did really like how it looked I liked how it wore I just don't know if it's memorable enough for me to keep reaching for I prefer something that's a little bit lighter for me, but this might be a good one for my skin tone in the summertime, so we'll see. I don't know if I'm obsessed with it yet, but I didn't hate it either, so I'm kind of on the fence with that. The thing that I'm like the most shocked about is definitely this powder right here, the Up Lighting Illuminating Powder. The way it made my skin look today, both as a finishing powder and as a highlighter on the high points, I was in love with this. And I was not expecting it to look as good as it did considering how dark it looks in the pan, but I'm so excited about this. This is probably one of the things I'm most excited about that I tried today and I feel like it was kind of an underdog because I just grabbed it last minute hoping that it would work as a highlighter maybe and I'm so happy that I picked this up because I really did enjoy the formula and I love the effect that it gave on my skin it looks so natural it doesn't look dry but it's a powder I don't know I'm a big fan of this so far and I can't wait to keep using it I felt like the blush was so pretty you can still see it on my cheeks it lasted all day long so I definitely feel like I will continue to reach for this as well I think the packaging is so cute and this color is great for any sort of makeup look. I really would love to try a more brighter shade in this formula because they had so many different colors, but I feel like that would be something that would be more fun in the spring and summer. So if I get enough use out of this this winter, I will definitely go back and pick up more colors. Let's talk about the eye products. The chubby stick on the eyes. I actually really liked this color. It's definitely more of a subtle way to wear color. It was very, very soft. It did not overpower the rest of the makeup look, but I kind of like that about this. And I do feel like I'll reach for this in the future. And it's kind of funny because I don't normally reach for lilac cream shadow sticks but I did enjoy this I really did so I'm excited about that the little eyeshadow I felt like it was pretty and I really liked it layered on top of the lilac right here I don't know if this eyeshadow is something that like you absolutely need but I do feel like it was really pretty and it did look nice on the lids it wore well on the lids so I do like it I don't know if I'm like obsessed with it enough to be like oh my gosh you need this in fact that's kind of the case with both of these products in a way I thought they both looked really nice but it just kind of depends on like what 
you're looking for and what you're willing to spend money on. If you're more of a simple person when it comes to your eye looks, you might enjoy something like this. If you would rather buy entire palettes and have lots of options, then maybe you wouldn't enjoy something like this. So it just kind of depends. The Clinique High Impact Mascara. I felt like it was a beautiful mascara for every day. And I can't tell if it's smudging right here on my lower lash line. I can't tell if that's mascara or what. It didn't smudge on the top lashes, which is really good, but I feel like it might have a little bit on the lower lash line. I'm gonna have to test it again to make sure. But what I really liked about this mascara was it's a very soft and very natural everyday kind of a mascara. It's definitely something that I personally would reach for for those kinds of occasions. If I'm doing anything more intense on the eyes, I personally don't reach for mascaras like this. I like something like the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, the Hourglass Caution Mascara, just something that's gonna really, really give my lashes volume. But I feel like so many people would really enjoy this because of how natural it makes your lashes look. I know so many women in my life who prefer that kind of a lash look versus a voluminous, almost clumpy lash look that I tend to go for. So I do feel like it is a good mascara so far. I am gonna have to double check on the lower lash line aspect of it, but I did really like it today and my husband actually complimented my mascara as well. Let's talk about the lip products. I actually really enjoyed this lip combo. It wore off my lips really, really well and it was a very comfortable formula. I'm gonna add a little bit more because my lips are feeling a little dry. But it seems like Clinique definitely does lip products well. So many people were suggesting a bunch of different lip products to me from them on Instagram. So I'm excited about this lipstick and I do really like the color of it. Is this kind of color available at the drugstore? Yes, probably. But again, this is all about Clinique. So if we're talking about just that lipstick right now, I do really like it. And then this gloss in the center, I love. Yeah, I just really love that combo. I think they layer up on top of each other nicely and they wore really well together. Oh, the brow pencil. I definitely really like the brow pencil. It lasted well through my brows, but I should have probably checked while I was at the store to see if it had a spoolie on the other side. Just because of that, for me personally, I wouldn't recommend it, which might sound dumb, but I just love a spoolie on the other side. So for me, there's better brow pencils out there for what I'm personally looking for in a brow pencil, but as far as the pencil formula goes, I did really like it, it was good. Okay, so overall, I know sometimes these full brand reviews, especially when it's first impression kind of stuff, can get overwhelming. So I feel like the top two things I'm excited about are the foundation, I'm definitely excited to wear this again, and I'm excited to try it with a different powder and with a different concealer, but I loved the shade that it was on me and I really loved how it wore throughout the day. And I would have to say the Clinique Uplighting Illuminating Powder was a very shocking surprise today. It made my skin look so beautiful and so lit from within. I'm actually very excited about this, so. These are my top two out of everything we tried. Even though a lot of this was good, I have to say I am actually very impressed and a little bit surprised at how much I like all of this stuff. For some reason, Clinique just was one of those like older people brands in my mind. I don't know if that's because my mom and like my aunt used to use it, but I guess that's kind of how Essay Lauder used to be until I started receiving PR from them. And now I use them all the time. So it's just kind of one of those things where I just never was very interested in it. But obviously there's a reason why Clinique exists and there's some good products here. I'm actually really impressed. Well, you guys, that completes today's video, trying out Clinique. I definitely feel like I found some hidden gems today. So thank you to everybody who suggested that I pick up some of these products. And thanks to everybody who suggested this video. I know a few of you guys have wanted to see me film with Clinique products. I've never talked about them on my channel. So I thoroughly enjoyed going through everything and creating a full face. And I really did like my makeup today. It was a very natural, glowy, healthy kind of a vibe and I was really into it. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Ali and I would love for you to join the family. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber but you wanna be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification every single time I post. Gosh, I still love that highlighter, it's so good. All right, you guys, I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Love you, bye.